Hey guys, it's Lumen. Today, I'll be discussing why I think the new Prince of Tennis collab is good for player mentality. Normally, I usually do a review of most of the cards, but nowadays, I feel like expressing my raw thoughts is more valuable, since most cards and machines usually aren't worth talking about. Prince of Tennis collab, unlike other machines, forgoes Ultimate Evolution Force for a second assist evolution on every single card in the collab. Each card can be made into a tennis racket equipped or a feature article equipped. Because there are no ultimate evolution forms whatsoever, the machine is basically two-thirds equipped. Furthermore, since almost all the base forms have lackluster leader skills, the remaining one-third of the machine is essentially comprised of sub-options. A team is composed of two leaders, four subs, and six equips. Therefore, the order of priority from most to least important should be equips first, sub second, and leaders last. In reality, the disparity is even larger as many equips can be used almost anywhere, while subs are usually limited by attribute or playstyle and leaders must be supported by specific cards for optimal play. Thus, prioritizing equips, then subs, then leaders generally leads to good box development which in turn enables flexible team building. However, players tend to focus on leaders first, then subs, then equips. While I may be wrong, this trend probably stems from the limitation of viable options in endgame play and is greatly exacerbated by the recently introduced title challenges. Thus, since only a couple leaders work for the latest dungeons, it seems like picking a viable lead and building around it is better as it enables players to clear the endgame. Unfortunately, the endgame changes quite often and old meta leads usually become non-viable in newly released technical sub-dungeons as team building is and should be specialized to the dungeon. Guess what carries over from team to team most of the time? That's right, the equips are what remain useful over time. Does anyone think that Yugi Moto will crush the current meta just because he reigns supreme in 2020? Of course not. But did you know that the powerful Red Ford card was also released at that time and is still used to this day even after two years of power creep? Did you know that a reasonable alternative didn't exist for 10 months until Yamasukami's second equip was released and that the fourth four turn delay equip is only being released now? Two years later? Yet there are those meta chasers who rub their nuts all over the latest leads that go obsolete after a month. Even if Shelling Ford was locked behind Godfist while Yugi and other leads could be traded for, two years of usage as a top end delay equip is unbelievable. Prince of Tennis may not appeal to said meta chasers, but the heavy emphasis on equips and subs is a boon for players. Hopefully, the collab helps players realize what they should really prioritize chasing. Anyway, that's enough from me about player mentality, let's dig into the machine. The aforementioned 4th 4 turn delay equip is Kiyosumi's tennis racket, and although it doesn't have a valuable skill boost like Red Ford card or Academy Orochi's ID card, nor does it have an array of resists like Yamasukami's horn, Kiyosumi's tennis racket does have two of the most valuable awakening in the current endgame, Team HP, which makes it absolutely nuts. Since every team needs to stall early to get transform cards up and running, long delay equips have basically become mandatory, but since none of them had team HP, it made the burden on the remaining 5 equip slots much heavier. Kiyosumi's tennis racket compresses valuable utility into one equip, which opens up much more team building flexibility. Too bad the base form is an untradeable middle rarity card. Next up, we got Ryoma Ichizen's equips. The tennis racket is heavily geared for Seawolf with both red and blue orb enhance as well as 2 team HP. While the inherited active does provide 2 turns of void void, this isn't particularly necessary for Seawolf as the red boat usually doesn't have too much of a problem with VVP. Interestingly, the tennis racket can pair with Beach Denavola's jet ski for the coveted 5 orb enhance for both red and blue. The feature article is much more flexible as a short multi-turn fusion inherit and a versatile set of awakenings that can go on basically any team, although the tricolor board change may be a turnoff. Moving on, we have Kago's feature article, which feels like a slightly different variant of Kugane's equip from Mystic's Inspectors. Any equip with 3 effective skill boosts 1 Awakening, 2 Turn Haste is nothing to sneeze at and the Orb Enhance and Blind Resist Awakenings provide nice utility. The main benefit of Keigo's feature article is its relative accessibility as a tradable equip option as obtaining Kugane generally required a brutal chase in Mystic's Inspectors because free rolls suck. The Blue Orb Permalock is also a pretty cool counter to enemy orb changes and spinners. 
Next up, we have Seichi Yukimura. While the presence of TPAs on a light attribute card screens Daytona, I had to think for a while about how he would fit. Basically, Yukimura functions as a pseudo transform card that has a fast two turn fusion and color void active after evolving his skill while still being able to double cap. The benefit of Yukimura for teams running Daytona and MD2 is that he can counter Paimon on floor 12 while taking care of the fusion gauntlet on floor 3 and floor 4, but the problem is that the active is mostly dead outside of those floors. The solution is probably to inherit a shield on top of Yukimura that will charge up on time to use on Mide. Anyway, I'm not sure how exactly it will work, but Yukimura's kit is definitely an intriguing fit on Daytona. As for his equips, Seiichi's tennis racket is basically a clone of Misty Rain, Shizumata's equip from Samurai Shodan, which is nice, but not that great since Shizumata's transform form got phased out by the Robe's playstyle for Royal Oak. And although Shizumata's pixel form is pretty nuts for farming, Shizumata will probably be kept in equipped form, thus diluting the value of Seiichi's tennis racket. Moving on, we have Kunimitsu Tezuka, the orb skin of the machine. With double L and double 10 C, much like another orb skin, Tezuka is definitely a sub option for Royal O. What's awesome about Tezuka is that his active casts a two turn fusion effect, then evolves into a super fast unlock and orb generation active, which is insane for MD2 because fusion is only really needed once. Thus, evolving out of the fusion active without transforming allows Tezuka to provide immense utility value while still being able to double cap. Kunimitsu's feature article is also quite useful as another variant of the skill boost equipped with a two turn haze. The main attraction of this equip is the staggering three team RCV awakenings which provide a massive recovery boost to any team. Unfortunately, Harvest Loot, Amatsu's second equip from Monster Hunter, already provides a very similar kit with the only difference being a cloud resist over Kunimitsu's extra team RCV awakening. However, cloud resist can be redundant if a sub already has the awakening. Leads like Nautilus, Royal Oak, and Maito can definitely make good use out of Kunimitsu's feature article. Next up, we have Genichiro Sanada. Though I don't think Sanada greatly impacts the game, his kit is notably amazing for Rosalind. First active provides a 3 turn shield, which helps Rosalind smoothly charge up her final form, especially in a dungeon like MD1. The skill evolves into a 1 turn haste on a 2 turn cooldown, which again helps Rosalind charge up her final form. The skill evolves once more and becomes a ridiculously fast 4 turn void void active along with a reasonably fat burst, which is perfect for Rosalind as the void void allows the fairy and her team to completely focus on pure combos for maximum firepower. Sanada also works on Seawolf as well and is great for both teams in SR3 due to his relatively rare light sub attribute, which gives players another option on top of Bright Charlo and Red Charmy Kitty. As for his equips, Genichiro's tennis racket is a resist stick with a nice shield inherit, while Genichiro Genichiro's feature article is the longest red self color change in the game, which could be potentially useful for ranking. Alright, I'm only going to briefly mention the rest of the top and middle rarity cards because they don't really catch my eye as much. Yushi's Tennis Racket is a ridiculously fast big shield inherit with nice awakening. Renji Yanagi provides ridiculous orb generation every 2 out of 3 turns once his skill evolves, as he creates a row on the first turn and then generates tons of green skyfall for the next turn. To be fair, the boosted Skyfall could all just disappear via Skyfall combos, but it's still a ridiculous amount of orb generation on such a fast cooldown. Renji's Tennis Racket is a relatively fast 4 turn color void inherit, and while it isn't as revolutionary as Captain's Robe was back in the day, the Tennis Racket is nice to have due to the relative scarcity of long color void equips. Jin Akutsu carries a pretty fast 2 turn void void on his evolve skill, which could be valuable versus multiple super resolve spawns with damage void shield. His tennis racket is the fastest 3 turn void void inherit and also packs a skill boost, which is great for farming. Eishiro Kite reminds me of Blue Albert in terms of awakenings and has a reasonably fast tricolor board active in his evolved active. Eishiro's tennis racket is great for survivability with 3 team HP awakenings and a hefty 2 turn big shield inherit. Kintaro Toyama is a potential quad cap target for Nautilus with VDP, 7C, and 10C with another VDP and SA. The rotating active is a little weird, but both the shield and the orb generation effects are useful and on a low cooldown. Kintaro's feature article includes a killer in 4 rows, which means it will always have the potential farming application. Alright, as for the bottom rarity, I don't really care for any of them except for Kei Tanishi's Tennis Racket which is an inheritable full dark board that also provides a huge spike and three dark rows. Absolutely ridiculous for farming. And that's my take on Prince of Tennis collab in what was probably more than 10 minutes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. See you in the next event and as always, good luck and have fun.